in this scenario, we have an energy company who has an integration that allows them to send their completed work orders to an ERP so that any cost associated to that work order can be accounted for. Now, what can happen is that these work orders can get stuck in the middleware when a billing code is blocked. Now, this can happen due to key monthly milestones such as month end, quarterly end, or even year end. Now, it doesn't matter how many times the operations analyst tries to resubmit this particular logic app run instance, it will continue to fail because this is a data issue, not so much a technical issue. So the way to resolve this is to engage a business stakeholder who can go ahead and unblock the billing code so that the work order can actually be booked against a specific maintenance order. Now, this can be highly disruptive for operations team because they have to manually chase all of these different activities. But using an operations agent based upon agent loop, we can go ahead and orchestrate a series of tools that will allow us to go ahead and get this issue resolved in a timely and efficient manner. Now, much like many other operations teams, our energy company here has gone ahead and documented their operational processes. Now, it starts with a general process that discusses how issues should be logged inside of ServiceNow. They should be created, updated, and closed and include a summary, provide some general guidance. And then also in this runbook are some specific instructions on how particular issues or errors should be resolved. So it starts with the name of the logic app, then it starts with the workflow, and then a specific error message. Now the scenario we're gonna look at is, is this particular one where we've got a workflow called process maintenance order, and there's an error message that indicates a maintenance code is currently blocked. Now the resolution steps outline how this issue would get resolved manually, step by step as a, you know, an, an operations person would follow each of these particular steps. Now here's the opportunity is how can we go ahead and use this knowledge and an AI agent to go ahead and automate much of this process. So if we flip over to our ERP, we can see we've got our maintenance order and it is currently blocked. So if we go ahead and run a transaction through, we would expect it to fail for this particular maintenance order. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with this particular workflow. So let's go ahead and resubmit essentially a message. And we can go ahead and look at the run history and see what processing took place. Now in this case, we can see we've got an internal server error. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we've got a maintenance code of one, two, three, four, five, six is currently blocked. And this transaction has actually failed. Now what this will result in is an alert being created inside of Azure Monitor. So if we head over to Azure Monitor, sure enough, we can see that we do have an error that has taken place uh, related to that workflow failing. So this begs the question of, if I'm an operations agent, how can I go ahead and fix this particular issue? And this is where our agent loop capability comes into place. So here we've got an agent built in Azure Logic Apps that includes several different tools. These tools include being able to create, update, and close ServiceNow tickets, uh, the ability to validate JSON, to communicate with the integration team, to get an operational runbook, that Word document that we just saw from SharePoint, the ability to go ahead and contact business stakeholders, resubmit a run instance, and so forth. Now, inside of this agent loop prompt, we're going to instruct the agent that they are an operations agent whose role is to respond to errors that emerge in the integration platform and use the operational runbook to go ahead and follow that process in order to get the issue resolved. And one thing in particular we do ask is that the agent shares its plan so we've got complete visibility and transparency into what it's trying to go ahead and achieve. So just from within this logic app, I can go ahead and kick off this particular agent. Now, as the operations analyst, I can go ahead and indicate, hey, I've got this error message 
and I'm not sure what to do. Can you help? So we'll go ahead and kick off this process. And once this is kicked off, we can now go ahead and have a conversation with this particular agent. So now the agent has started and I've got this agent chat that shows up here. And what it's asking for now is that in order to help me, it needs to be able to obtain a workflow name and a run ID. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste a run ID into the chat. Now notice I haven't specified that this is a run ID, but the model has been able to go ahead and figure that one out. Similarly, we can go ahead and uh, provide the workflow name and it's going to figure out that this is also a workflow name. Now what the agent loop now is going to go do is it's going to orchestrate the resolution of our issue and it's going to start by going ahead and retrieving the content from the operational runbook. Now as instructed, the operational agent is going to go ahead and follow the process by the runbook that includes creating a ServiceNow ticket. So if we go ahead and click into this, we can see that we have a ticket that uh, ends in 005 that has been created for us. Now, the next step that it's supposed to go ahead and perform is to reach out to the business stakeholder to see if they can go ahead and unblock this particular record so that the agent can safely go ahead and resubmit that run instance. So let's flip over to Teams and see what's waiting for us there. So inside of Teams, here we have a, an adaptive card and it is going to ask us to unblock the maintenance code for that particular work order. And once we're done, we're supposed to go ahead and click on proceed. So we'll now go into the ERP. We will unblock this particular maintenance order. Our data has now been saved and we can go ahead and instruct the agent to proceed. So now the agent is going to finish off the process by going ahead and resubmitting that particular message and also, you know, handling the ServiceNow ticket as well. So if we go ahead and head back to our workflow that caused the original issue, we can now see that it has been resubmitted successfully and that our call to our API has been successful. Now, what's also important here is that we need to go ahead and check up on our ServiceNow ticket to see what state it currently is in. But before we do that, we need to head back over to Teams where our agent has notified us that the resubmission has been successful and asking if we can go ahead and close the ticket on, on their behalf. So we'll go ahead and click on proceed and that will enable the agent to go ahead and to finish our process and subsequently go ahead and close our ServiceNow ticket. So we can see here that we've got an update to ServiceNow. We also have a close of the ticket to ServiceNow. And then the last step of our process was that we're supposed to go ahead and notify the integration team that this has all taken place. So we're now over in ServiceNow and we can open up our ticket. We can see the audit trail. We can see when the ticket was created. We can see that it was actually updated and we have work notes. And then we also can see that it has been closed as well. So what's really important about this is that we've conformed to all of the processes of the customer itself in terms of how do they manage tickets and making sure we've got an audit trail. We've enabled a human in the loop to be able to go ahead and unlock some specific business data. And we were able to orchestrate this in a very efficient manner. We didn't have to manually chase down end users to go ahead and, and get this work done. We we're able to orchestrate this all through AI. And of course, keeping key stakeholders in the loop as we made progress.